The recent information that Apple iPhone 16 might not be compatible with China's Tencent, and in particular with the Do It All app, or as the Chinese like to call it, the APP WeChat, really ruffled a few feathers here in China. It is hard to say if it was an item of false news or nothing more than just a rumor, or if it was a floater, you know, meaning that if it was well received, then it would happen, or if it was poorly received, it would be scraped off, or if it was ever even an issue at all. It's really hard to tell. But social media did go wild with speculation, and the bottom line was that it would almost certainly mean the death of Apple in China, because nothing but a few diehards would remain loyal to the brand and if they did, they would have to carry more than one phone in order to survive in China. And you might be saying, surviving China, what are you talking about? Well, yes, it is that big a deal, let me tell you. Let's talk then for a moment about WeChat. In China, we use it for everything, absolutely everything. We use it to communicate for free whenever we are on Wi-Fi and for minimal tiny fees in the range of micro cents if we are on our phone networks. There is nowhere in China where WeChat doesn't work. And if anyone knows of a place that doesn't accept that in China, do let me know in the comments section because I can think of a place where in the last 10 years or so that I've traveled so extensively through China, I've actually never found a place that is not available where I cannot use it. I can book hotels. I can order taxis or a private hire car on it. I can top up my mobile phone, I can pay my electricity bill, buy insurance, get a train or a plane ticket, I can order a ticket to a concert or a sports game, I can join a group with friends, I can conduct meetings, intense and meetings, I can join classes or even conduct my own training for other people on the app. I can play games, I can book hospital appointments, which I can, later on I can actually pay for from the app. I can even get minor consultations with a doctor on the app. Now, if I live in a rural area, my doctor would be liaising with a more experienced doctor in the city on WeChat. I can shop through it. I can order deliveries and have them delivered to my home address or whatever address that I set. I can even track the delivery and know within minutes when it will arrive and where it is at any moment. I can invest through it. I can also interact with my bank using it. My favorite restaurants, clubs, shops, as well as the shopping mall, they're all there. I can read news, I can exchange gossip, I can watch movies, I can even use X, Facebook and YouTube through the VPN by following links that people send me on WeChat. I can host a StreamYard live stream and invite guests on it, and I can join a Twitter space through it. I can even meet complete strangers through a people nearby function when you shake the phone and it shows you somebody who's around, you can start chatting and maybe meet them in person. So in short, listen, there isn't anything that I can think of that I can't do on this app. So if Apple were serious about deleting it, then the repercussions for Apple would be its complete demise in the market. It, it, China will be dead for them. Fortunately, we can all breathe a sigh of relief as Apple announced there would be WeChat updates available on the iPhone 16, according to MacRumors.com. That was in September 6th, so need to check again. But the launch of the iPhone 16 came and went with little fanfare, at least here in China. But that was to be expected because within moments of that launch, Huawei launched a trifold phone to steal Apple's thunder. As of the date of the announcement, Huawei had pre-orders for five million phones. Apple have opened the pre-orders already. Ominously, they will do so on Friday the 13th, and both the iPhone 16 and Huawei Mate XT tri-folding device will be in stores on the 20th, a couple of days now. Now, the story goes that Tencent, the parent company of WeChat and Apple, are at loggerheads because Apple wants a share of some revenue that Tencent doesn't collect. WeChat has free mini games in the platform, and Apple isn't worried about that. But if a user likes the game and wants to purchase it for a 
deeper experience with more features, then they click on the Buy Now option and leave WeChat to enter the game vendor's platform. WeChat charges nothing for this service, but Apple wants a share of the fee that the game vendor makes and wants Tencent to pay for this. <laughs> Until a few years ago, Apple was a big player in China. Over the last year or so, it's dropped from number one to number three, and now number six. Now, as always, U.S. media misinforms its audiences of the reasons for this, with a worsening Chinese economy being one of the main drivers of Apple's reduction in sales in China. This worsening economy has seen a 10-year-on-year increase in sales of the top five brands, all of which are Chinese, so go figure. Samsung doesn't make the cut in China, being listed as others. Another reason for Apple's decline, they would contest, is that they were forced by the Cyberspace Administration for China to remove some apps from the Chinese App Store. These included WhatsApp and Threads, as well as Facebook and Instagram. But as far as I know, YouTube is still there. This decision might seem strange, but it is, in fact, a national security issue. Encrypted messaging is not acceptable in China's transparent communications legislation. It's that simple. It seems Apple have made a decision, and their decision is to go with the Chinese flow. They want the market. They're struggling with sales in China, that's for sure. By all accounts, because China keeps innovating and introducing better features, such as AI and AI translation, buy and trifold phones, which Apple have yet to make. So until they can pick up the game in these fields, they will continue to lose a percentage of their ongoing business that I have no doubt. However, even being number six means that they move tens of millions of smartphones a year. China has now topped over 1 billion users and expects to move to 1.2 billion users by 2027. So for the sake of a little additional revenue from a few games, if you ask me, Apple was never going to risk that. <laughs> it would be a really foolish move indeed to, to poke a market of that size in the eye. But if there are any corporations in the world willing to do something so stupid, it would almost certainly be U.S. corporations. All right, friends. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to check this video right here to see a little bit more about my insights into China and live here. And until I see you again, take it easy and bye for now.